After doing research for my Minecraft lore video, I realized that there was much more lore in Minecraft than you may have originally thought. And one of the most impactful and underexplored topics in Minecraft lore is what we're going to explore today. Magic. We all recognize that there is magic in the world of Minecraft, but what's interesting is from a lore perspective is looking at where magic derives from, and how we can analyze different groups based on their relationship to magic. The diegetic or in-world explanation for magic is implicit to the player. We aren't given an exact explanation, but there are context clues. Obsidian is the magical block of Minecraft. Portals, enchantment tables, ender chests, and beacons all require this block to function as a conduit for their magical power. Obsidian also has a lot of durability and is one of only four blocks that the ender dragon cannot destroy. It also forms the pillars of healing power in the end, yet there's no lava or water in the end to make obsidian. In fact, even if there was, how would an enderman use water? Which begs the question on how it even got there. Next is enchantment, and enchantment is a form of memory magic. It uses the experience that Steve gains to imbue an item with power and can be stored as knowledge or recorded thought in books. Evokers though, they employ magic we cannot recreate. They use summoning spells to create vexes and fangs. They can create after death and totems. Villagers and illagers are both aware of magic, and but villagers only offer magic items for sale and never partake in wielding magic like evokers do. The visual difference between villagers and illagers are illagers' blue eyes and ashen skin, which asks the question, is there a physical cost to magic? And did a schism form over the practice of magic that divided the villager society? Magic is not all the same in this world, and there are certainly different schools of magic. Evokers use summoning magic, but what others are there? Golemancy creates other creatures, and it's not technological, as snow golems are created similarly to iron golems. Steve can create golems, making it a player obtainable magic, but what's interesting about this however is that golems made by Steve recognize him as the creator, and it's coded not to attack Steve even if you attack a villager in front of that golem. For an in-world explanation, this implies that they know Steve created him, and that he is the one that gave them life. Artifact magic is central to Minecraft lore. Both the Trident and the Heart of the Sea are two items that allow Steve to obtain otherwise unobtainable magic. Tridents can only give access to lightning and self-propelled flight, and I'm not counting Elytra as that's only gliding. While the Heart of the Sea can be found in buried treasure, and works to give the player a whole slew of powers, from better vision to water breathing. And these items are notably linked to nature and water magic. But Hearts of the Sea specifically are only found in buried treasure, and they damage drowned and guardians. Their magic is separate and antagonistic of drowned and guardians, and yet it requires prismarine and nautilus shells to function, both items connected to guardians and drowned respectively. This implies that there, is, that there is at least three key species to Minecraft oceans, and then begs the question, what history belongs to the oceans of Minecraft? What role do guardians play, and how did the heart of the sea get buried? That was my first episode in the Minecraft lore series, and there is a lot more coming in short periods of time. So let me know if you enjoyed this one.